Hi, this is your five minute geography lesson. We're covering theme five, element 13, sustainable ecosystem use. Please take your seats. I'm Mr. S and I'll be your five minute teacher. Today we're reviewing the sustainable use of ecosystems. And let's start with the tropical rainforest. Now we know that tropical rainforest is used for quite a few different things by mankind. So either for the resources that are available, like the wood and timber from logging, it could be from the resources found underground, like in mining, or it could be for clearance of the land so that we can grow crops or for road access and things like that. But we also know that the ecosystem provides key services to us. So it provides us with clean water. It prevents flooding in certain at risk areas. It provides us with natural resources like the oxygen that we need to breathe or producing our foodstuffs. So we're looking today at how are the rainforests protected? Well, there are quite a few different things that are in use at the minute. So the first one we're going to cover is this one called selective logging. So that's where we only cut down the oldest trees that are nearing the end of their life and in particular the ones that aren't at risk. So the, the species that aren't as rare. And in doing so, we're going to protect the wider rainforest and the species that would go extinct if we didn't. There's also this thing called the FSC, which is the Forest Stewardship Council. If you ever bought a, a, some timber or a product made from wood, more likely or not, then it'll have the FSC stamp on it. So it's an international organization that's trying to educate people on the sustainable use of timbers. We also have agroforestry. So this is where we clear the land. So we deforest, we build a farm. It could be for agriculture, so we grow crops, or it could be pastoral, raising animals. But as we do so, we also plant new trees to replace the ones that have been cut down. Or when the farm's finished, so all the available nutrients from the soil have been taken, they've got to move on, then they replant trees in order to allow it to recover. In the deforesting process, it's often uh, the case that there are large areas of forest that are left in isolation around areas that have been completely deforested. So there's like forests made of like little islands. The problem is wildlife doesn't like to move over open ground like the deforested areas. So the populations of certain animals will start to dwindle because they can't find a mate, for example. So a wildlife corridor is a long stretch of vegetation that joins up these little islands of forests together, which means that the animals can move between them and therefore flourish and survive. We've also got ecotourism that goes on. So this is where it takes smaller groups of people. So it's not like mass tourism, where you have hundreds and thousands of people moving in on a key location every year. Ecotourism, uh, sorry, is where we look at smaller groups. They teach the people as well about how to be sustainable on their trip. Any money made is then placed back into protecting the environment that they're visiting. And profits also go to local people and local businesses. But unlike mass tourism, which usually goes back to a big multinational in a uh, HIC. And then finally, a lot of our rainforests are found in LICs and in low income countries, and they often owe money to the richer countries. So this idea of debt swapping is where richer countries will cancel a debt in order for a HIC to say, well, in which case we, we won't use our rainforest or we won't deforest our rainforest as much. Let's have a quick look at our savannah as well. So the savannah's main issue is the fact that it has an increasing population. We know that the savannah has a very fragile ecosystem and it's on a knife edge due to the amount of water that it has. So when the population is increasing, it's going to put increasing demand on the resources available in that ecosystem. So the first one we're going to have a look at is crop rotations. So if people plant the same crop year after year, the same nutrients are going to be taken from the soil repeatedly. So it means that that soil never has a chance to recover any nutrients that it's lost. And eventually it will lose all those nutrients and the process of desertification will start to take place where the soil starts to turn to sand in the desert. So if in one year you grow one crop, you give it a bit of time to rest 
and then you grow a different crop, it's taking different nutrients out of the soil, and therefore the nutrients from the first crop can start to be replenished. And if you keep cycling that, then the soil will, uh, will not lose nutri uh, its nutrients as much and therefore won't turn into sands. So the, the savannah is at that point between the rainforest and the desert, so it's an at-risk area. There's this idea of afforestation. It's also called reforestation. So we plant more trees, and we know that in planting trees, when foliage drops or dies, it then is decomposed and provides nutrients to the soil, so it's going to enrich it, make it more fertile. But equally, the roots also have the advantage of anchoring the soil in place, so it's less likely to start blowing away and turning to sand. Lots of countries are looking at drought-resistant crops as well. So the savanna goes through a rainy period and a dry period. And drought-resistant crops would be more likely to be able to grow during that dry period. But also, sometimes the savanna goes through long periods of time, longer than it expects, where it gets no rain at all. and It doesn't get any rains in the rainy season. So if they can get crops that can grow all year round, it's going to place less strain on that environment and use less water to grow those crops. And then finally, population control. So lots of people in the savannah are nomadic. So they'll move from one location to another depending on where the animals are moving to or where the crops are growing the best. But a lot of people now are starting to settle down in one location because of so many people. The other issue with that is if you've got more people, you need more food and you need more water. So population control is about educating people in the savannah about the advantages of having a smaller family providing them with the resources so that they don't need to have a larger family, so they don't need lots of children to work on the farm and grow food, which are some of the uh, responses that you've seen above with the crop rotations and the drought-resistant crops. Well, that's it for today. Now swap your knowledge debt by completing the Try It Now tasks for homework. Class dismissed.